Yeah, what's going on, y'all? This is your boy Ellison, ready to, ready to teach you another lesson. All right, I'm here to interview Young Sudo, all the way from Australia, for real. OTB, man. Can you care to? Uh, can, do you care to oh, like explain plug. who you are, bro? And uh... yeah, for sure. Yes, sir. Boom. Can you explain to who you are, for real? Young Sudo, only the blood. Oh, Nah, no, son. We out here <laughs> in Australia, tapping in. That's what I'm we, talking about. You know about. what I'm saying? We in, we out here in my hood. You feel me? In Melbourne, on the west side of Melbourne, Melbourne, Victoria, in Australia. You feel me? And I'm Young Sudo, aka Young Sudanese, aka Young Rich Sudo. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out Wolves Den podcast. You know, shout out Ellison Rodate. You know what I'm saying? Tapping in with my homie, all the way from Arizona. You dig? All the way from AZ, dog. A to the Z. You know how it is. For sure. What up, dog? We had to give this game to these to these youths, you know what I'm saying? We had to get a game to the whole world. So let's do it, man. For real, dog. Yeah, man. I'm just here to interview you, trying to uh, share your story, trying to see uh, where you came from. Uh, I want you I want you to share uh, some of your, you know, your your hardships and your tribulations uh, to the people that way uh, the, the people out there can relate to you, you know, uh, you know, from, so that they can uh, come out of from the shadows. You feel me? Cause they're just like me and you, you know, they just work in silence. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, I'm young Sudo, AKA young Sudanese. I was born in Sudan in Khartoum in Africa. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I was born there. Then I moved to, I moved all around, you know what I'm saying? Like all over Africa, went to Egypt, my little bro born in Egypt, in Cairo, you feel me? So um, from Cairo, then we just kept going from like, you know what I'm saying? From different foreign countries all the way to Australia. Um, we left we left That's Sudan because of war, like, you know what I'm saying? Like my people was just, there was, there was too much going on over there. So we just left to come get, um, we refuge, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I feel that. Came I feel to, that. Came, yeah, can came you explain? Find somewhere else, somewhere else better to live, somewhere safer. So, yeah, we moved to Australia. You know what I'm saying? And then ever since then, like, yeah, I spent about like I came to Victoria, been all over Victoria. Um, you know what I'm saying? Grew up out here, Victoria. Spent went to primary school out here, went to high school out here. You know, all over from the east side, all over different sides. Then I moved to the west side, did high school out here on the west side of Melbourne. In Wyndhamville, you know what I'm saying? That's my that's my neighborhood, Wyndhamville. So I grew up out there. Then, like, growing up and shit, I was doing a lot of music. You know what I'm saying? I blew up with the music shit. Ended up on TV, on on the news and shit, on ABC. So, man, from there, like, man, I fucking just started this YouTube shit, like, less than two years ago. You feel me? Like, I changed changed my artist name to, uh, to my content creator name, which is Young Sudo. Um, so I did YouTube these last two years, and I've just been traveling all over Australia, like with doing travel vlogs, doing mukbangs, like creating content, giving advice, like sharing my experience, showing trials and tribulations, like sharing stories, showing people, like edu giving people education, showing people how to change their lives and how to get rich online. You know what I'm saying? And just just That's how to like about. how to unlock your full potential, because we got a lot of like I grew up going through a lot of the. The gang shit, the being outside, getting into trouble, like, you know what I'm saying, going through, like, I grew up young, you know what I'm saying, so I was, man, I was, I was trapping, you know what I'm saying, I was selling weed, I was, you know what I'm saying, like, I was hustling at a very young age, so I grew up at a young age, being outside, I jumped off the push, like, shit, like, 12, 13, you know what I'm saying, playing basketball and shit, then got in the streets real fast and just been thugging, you know what I'm saying, all these years, all the way till now, I'm 22 years old. Oh, I feel that, man, that's what I'm talking about, man, and it, what what is it that you do apart from that, from uh, trying to share with people how to uh, become successful? Shit, apart from that, like, I be out here in these streets, like, helping my people, you know what I'm saying, like, I be, like, networking i run into my peoples I, I i show them the way you know what i'm saying like i show them how to get monetized online how to really change your life and be big like be massive you know what i'm saying fam 
how to like really establish yourself because I got out the streets like like about like two years ago, you know what I'm saying? Like went clean, went the clean route, like just doing this content creator shit and I ain't been doing nothing, you know what I'm saying? I ain't been selling no work. That's what I'm talking about, man. Hell yeah, that's that's good to hear from you, man. I, I gotta say, like, uh, we just got acquainted, uh, and honestly, uh, I've been looking into some of your content. And uh, for the viewers out there, if you want to check into uh, YouTube, uh, his uh, his main account should be Young Pseudo Live. You feel me? So if you want to check in some of his uh, content, go ahead on YouTube. And subscribe, show some love, you feel me? Yeah, for sure. I'm live right now showing this interview on my Young Pseudo TV channel. So y'all go, we want to go check that shit out. Go, go on, you know what I'm saying? Like, go on, check out my live, you know what I'm saying? Y'all want to get that early access. Hell yeah, man. And uh, I just want to go into a lot, some of your uh, trials and tribulations, man, a little bit. If, you, if you're willing, uh, or if, even if you're comfortable enough. Yeah, for sure. Before we even get into the trials and tribulations, let me just shout out like where you could, let me just shout out myself real quick and show y'all where y'all can get me. I got like six channels, you know what I'm saying? I got Young Young Pseudo TV, you know what I'm saying? I got videos with more than two hundred thousand views. I got millions of views online. I got fucking ABC interview with the Six Six Records, you know what I'm saying? Like online that y'all can see right now with like a million views on it. Um, I got Young Pseudo World, you feel me? I got Young Pseudo Reaction, like, I got, um, well, I'd be doing reaction videos and shit. I got, um, Young Rich Pseudo, you feel me? Then I got my original OG first account, which is Young Pseudo. So y'all go subscribe and turn on all post notifications. I'll be posting vlogs, mukbangs, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, lifestyle vlogs, travel vlogs, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I be going hard. Hell yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna dive. Uh, I'm gonna dive real quick, man. So, if uh, are you ready? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And shout out, shout out my homie who let me, like, you know what I'm saying, create this content in this space, bro. Like, shout out to the homie. You feel me? Like, shout out my homie Matt. Shout out Matt, man. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, Matt, man's a man, bro. For real. He the one that we connected me to you too. Like, he the one that connected me to you too. You feel me? He the one that showed me you. And, and like help me get this interview you feel me so shout out to him man hell yeah all, all day shout man out to I, him. shout out to his people for real like i, I have the almost respect for odin man he he's been through it all so uh i just gotta gotta thank him for uh like you said you know because of him we, we were introduced so uh thank you for for doing that you feel me uh yeah, but sure. just uh shout out to him. thank you for doing that Hell yeah. So just real quick, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what got you started into the whole blogging journey, like the the whole YouTube? Yeah, what got me started into like blogging and doing my journey and doing YouTube is... Exactly. Like, man, I just really like, I was broke as fuck, you know what I'm saying, trying to find a way to like get out these streets, you know, trying to find a way to make it out of my hood, trying to find a way to be successful, you know what I'm saying, like, I was, I was, man, I was struggling, you know what I'm saying, that COVID pandemic hit, and I was just going through it, you know what I'm saying, like, I was just trying to, like, figure out how to make money online and shit, because I kept seeing them ads on YouTube, you know what I'm saying, or, like, they trying try to help you do e-commerce and shit, so I'm like, damn, yeah. me, you know what I'm saying, let me, like, let me check this out. You know what I'm saying? Let me do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, let, me, I feel um, let me just figure this shit out. Let me find out how I could get money, but also change people's lives, too. Because I knew that, like, I knew that for me to do a business and stuff like that, I'm going to have to work with people. So, I'm, so I wanted to, like, become a people's, per become more of a people's person. And, like, you know what I'm saying? Use that skill to, like, to monetize that shit. You feel me? And to really show what I do, who I am, like, how I live, like, you know, showing people just how to, like, be yourself in the most authentic way, but also get money while doing it, like, get monetized, you know what I'm saying, from making videos, from showing yourself online, making a brand, doing online businesses and shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Brand deals, and all I, that shit. I want to tap into all that. Hell yeah, man. Merchandise, and, uh, everything. 
You know, it created a brand, basically, huh? I definitely created a brand, especially with this OTV shit. This is only the blood, you feel me? Like, I created this shit when I was young. Like, like when I was, like, 10, like 11, 12 years old, tell you, I created that shit myself. And, <clears throat> and, like, I just wanted to, like, create something that all of us can benefit from. Like, as a family, kind of like Lil Durk's Only the Family, like... Man, I created this Only the Blood shit, like, before I even knew about Only the Family or OTF. Feel me? I created this OTB shit at a very young age, and I just wanted all of us to benefit from it. I wanted to create a brand. Like, I wanted us to, like, do entertainment from this, you feel me? Like, I wanted to basically do, like, films, do music videos, create content. I just wanted to, like, create something that... All of us could like, you know, then like not only represent but like monetize, like from. Yeah. You feel me? Try, we try. Yeah, we try I see. Monet, what we was trying to monetize this shit. We was trying to make money off this shit, off selling clothes, merchandise, everything. You know what I'm saying? Showing ourselves online. You dig? Mhm, mm mhm. Mm I know exactly what you're talking about. And um, honestly, like man, like that. Change that, our lives. You feel me? Something that can help us all, like. Be something. Yeah, something you know, that everybody something can replace. Yeah. And it's like a family, it's like a team, it's like a, it's like a clique, it's like a squad, it's like a gang. You feel me? It's like a, man, this shit big. You feel me? We got hundreds of people that rep this shit all over the world. We got thousands of people that rep this shit. Got a lot of motherfuckers rep this OTB shit for real. Yeah, I feel that, and uh, a lot of people can relate to that, and that's that's what kind of like you trying to do is uh trying to reach out to people so people can relate to that you know, who are going to through the same uh, trials and tribulations or through the same trauma so they, you know, honestly man like you, you're doing great and, and i respect that yeah for sure no i appreciate you thanks man like you know what i'm saying like for real like this only blood shit real i got this shit tattered on my face i got otb tattered on my face right here you know what i'm saying I could have got Hell teardrops yeah. for all the wars and all the shit I done been through, but I got OTB right here. You know what I'm saying? And I got my son King right here on my face. You dig? Hell yeah. Um, then I got, got um, I got Africa map right here tattered on my face. You dig? Then I got B. You know what I'm saying? Like I got B for my baby mama. You dig? Hell yeah. That's one, yeah, that's sure. that's pretty cool, man. I've been wanting to get a tattoo. Oh, this year, what's your yeah, baby mom's you name, if you, if you could? Then I got, then I got OTV right here, you know what I'm saying? Only the blood on my hand. What'd you say? You say, well, what's yeah. my baby mama's name? Yeah, if you want to share, man, what's your baby's, not, baby's mama's name? No, I ain't going to share, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you, go my, you, go, you go on my channel, you might, you might find that shit real quick. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, 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 that's true, man. TV channel, you might find that shit. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. Um, you don't suit so, uh, Hell yeah. So I have another question for you, if you're if you're comfortable enough. But and I I'd just like got to, out of prison uh, recently too, so I'm like, I'll be showing people like how to change your life coming out of prison. Like I just went and did a month. Like you know what I'm saying? I just fresh. I'm fresh out. I just came out of prison like two weeks ago. And I was in there for like a Damn. month. You feel me? I went to like three different prisons. You feel me? I went to fucking, I went to um first prison. I went to I went to like a custody center, right? Melbourne custody center. Then I went to mm -hmm. Melbourne assessment prison, which is called MAP. Then I went to MRC, which is Melbourne, uh, I mean uh, Metropolitan Remount Center. And then from there, I went to like somewhere three, four hours away from my hood, which is um, Fulham Correctional Center. You dig? Then I was in the slot, like, you know what I'm saying? I was in the slot on some 23-hour lockdown type shit, you know what I'm saying? You can only come out between fucking, like, 8 a.m. and uh, 4 p.m., you dig? So, yeah, that's some knowledge it. for the youth, too, and, like, show them how to fucking, how to deal with that shit, because a lot of people in there, they mentally weak, you feel me? Like, they they mentally weak inside there, and they come out, like, worried and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, about what they're going to do and what to do and shit. So I can teach people Hell the way yeah. shit. I got a 45 minute video that I posted. It's called um, Young Sudo Fresh Home from Prison slash Jail. Talks how he changed and talks about new Young Rich Sudo channel. Yeah, like in that 45 minute video, I just basically 
it's like it's me fresh out of jail, my first vlog type shit, just telling people about jail and how it's fucked up and how it makes you want to commit suicide and not want to be in there. And, you know what I'm saying, it makes you want to fucking, like, man, it make you give up on life, especially if you're in there not knowing when you're going to get out of shit. That shit's a fucked up feeling. You're dealing with these fucked up, corrupted-ass gods and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you fucking, man, you fucked up in there. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You niggas be broke and shit. Having, you can only spend, like, 140 a month unless you get, like, special spend. That you can spend extra on and shit. Then you can get, like, fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, like, $50 a month on the phone and shit. Damn, that's crazy, dog. Yeah, nigga. So it's real out here. Australia, too. Australia, kind of like America, you know what I'm saying? Niggas be having shooters yeah. out here. And, like, nigga, I just lost my homie recently, like, in my hood in Windervale, like, to a shooting and shit. You feel me? I lost two of my homies. And another one of my homies got shot up. He got fucked up. So, Damn, like, bro. Rest in peace, yeah, that bro. That happened, like, maybe, like, two, two, what? Like, two, three months ago or some shit? Like, uh, y'all can find that shit on God numbers. damn. Those are my homies. That shit's recent. Supposed, He's chill at they crib, you know, he's chill. I grew up with them niggas. I used to be at their house, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying, bro. For real. <laughs> Damn, dude. Rest in peace. For real. I wish yeah, I had long some liquor so niggas, I could pour man. some. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah no problem, man. Nah, but, you know what I'm saying? But we turned, so you know what I'm saying? Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Go sip that uh, shit. Uh, we ain't going to pour it out. <laughs> Hell yeah. So uh, I just want to invite you real quick uh, if you could share with me if uh, there's a significant traumatic experience or uh, experiences that you can uh, remember that uh, kind of hit you, uh, whether if it gave you meaning in life or purpose. You say, do I got a traumatic experience like that I can share? Try your shit. Like, what is, you know what I'm saying? What yeah. Give me a fuck. Like, with the purpose of, like, the purpose of, like, how it affected me and shit like that. All right, look, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to name one right now, and I'm going to give you some more and shit throughout this interview. But, because I done been through a lot of life or death situations. I done almost lost my, I done, I done, I'm gonna, I done almost lost my life countless times, you feel me? So, I can yeah. really share with the youth some, like, yeah, it's one time you did, like, one time I was at a party and shit, you know what I'm saying? And this was, like, when I'm turn lit as fuck like i got music videos out and shit like i'm a lit rapper and i'm famous as fuck since, since i was i've been famous as fuck since i was young so this is around a time when like everybody know me everybody in the city everybody in melbourne so like i went to this party like this house party thinking everything's all sweet i'm with my niggas and they telling me some of the niggas who are there like and they they like they they homies too of me and they know me and shit so i'm thinking yeah everything all sweet hmm. so i go there right like I go there, and, man, like, I run into some niggas who I didn't beat up. You know what I'm saying? Because I had this, I had some one-on-one -on -one fights in the past. I didn't beat niggas up, a lot of motherfuckers. So I, I run into this one nigga who I beat up bad in front of everybody, in front of all the homies, in front of niggas from out, like, from different areas, out of areas and shit. Like, everybody knew about this shit. And it was recorded, too, so everybody online knew it. Thousands of people seen it on Snapchat. So Damn. I run into this one nigga, yeah? And he seen me, mm. and when he seen me, everything was all good. He didn't try to press me or nothing. He seen me, then he didn't even try to come say what's up to me or none of that. But all of his homies, like, was like, you know what I mean? was saying what's up and shit while he was walking around acting goofy and shit. So I'm thinking in my head, like, oh, yeah, it's all good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, like, ain't shit finna happen. I keep, I keep running into this nigga multiple times after that, and I'm smoking, drinking all through the house and shit, getting geek, nigga. There's a whole bunch of bad bitches around and shit. So then... Like, after a bit, I'm chilling, I'm chilling, I get drunk as fuck, right? I go to walk upstairs and shit, and this nigga come and cheap shot me type shit. You feel me? This nigga come and cheap shot me. And, like, he fucking, once he cheap shot me, then niggas jump me. Then these niggas jump me. Right mm. there. And I was all bloody, I was fucked, you feel me? Then, lucky my niggas was there and shit, because they grabbed me. They grabbed me, right? Uh, they mm -hmm. walk me out type shit. Took me to the car and made sure I was straight type shit. Then we got up out of there. Because you know how it be in certain situations like that. Nigga, you better get up out of there. Especially if you got niggas doing op shit. You feel me? But, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, once we got up out of there and shit, like, once everything was straight. Yeah. Then, like, months, like, months later type shit. 
This this is when I when I ain't been around my niggas for a minute. Them niggas go out of state. You feel me? Mm. Them niggas go out of state. And then the the bro happen type shit. Then my niggas like nigga they got pressed, they got fucked up. You feel me? Like nigga Nas is involved, niggas shit got bloody. You know what I'm saying? Just out of state. No, that's Just because niggas was still holding that grudge and shit, niggas was jealous. You know how it be out here in these streets? People be jealous, like. Like they see what you doing and shit, they be they be wanting to be part of your clique and they be you know what I'm saying, or they be wanting they click to be like yours type shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't be understanding sometimes in life. Right. Niggas just gotta let shit be, but these niggas be so jealous cause they like, you know what I'm saying? Like they kinda like us, they black like us too, you know what I'm saying? So they was looking at us like competition as well too. Looking at us like uh. Niggas envious and shit, you feel me? And niggas be feeling entitled, too, to be being part of what you got. Niggas hate when you don't fuck with them type shit, you know what I'm saying? Niggas hate when for you real. ignore them and shit. Yeah, Especially for when real. everybody be watching each other on Snap and online, on Snapchat and online and shit. Yeah. So that was like some fucked up shit. That was like some life-changing shit, because my nigga got fucked up like an uh, innocent-ass nigga. Like niggas, nigga, hella niggas, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That shit was bad. Okay. She got bloody. And then like another situation like I got I got videos of this on my channel like it's it's called like my homie got killed in my hood and I got multiple parts I got like a part one I got a part two of two different situations right right I got a cousin I got a cousin the nigga like yeah he turn up he get lit he get fucked up he be taking drugs and shit taking pills getting high and shit like that like smoking weed hmm. so. But he's old as fuck, you know what I'm saying? The nigga was in, like, his 30s type shit. And this a nigga, like, you see around the hood, like, you know them, you know them niggas in the hood you see get fucked up, like, bad? Like, them niggas walk around, like, zombies type shit? Yeah. Yeah, my, my cuz was kind of on that shit, too, you feel me? Oh, okay. And, like, at the time, too, a lot of people was misunderstanding him, too, because he was trying to figure it out, you know what I'm saying? He was trying to, like, you know what I'm saying? Build some shit, trying to, like, create some shit, try to get money out of shit, you know what I'm saying, like, but in a yeah. different way, not the traditional way, but like, just having a nine to five and shit, nigga yeah, was trying to get I know rich, what you mean. so people was like, like, looking at him like a weirdo, like, looking at him like he's strange and shit, cause the nigga be I on, see what like, on, on his own shit, nigga be out turning up and shit, like, nigga going through shit, you feel me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so nigga, we used to kick it. We used to kick it a lot, type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like at, the, at like in some, at like trap houses and shit in the hood and shit, outside and shit. You see him at clubs and shit. Growing up and shit. Then this nigga, like in my hood, like right down the road of my of my crib, type shit. At the, mm -hmm. we was at the. This this shit happened on Armstrong Road in my hood. In Winterville, just over there, like at the um, Winterville Square, like that shopping center right there next to the lights. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shit. Off from the train station. So this nigga was out one time, like, got lit as fuck, got turned, yeah, like the nigga was. The nigga. The nigga was walking, yeah, like he's walking, like on the. There's like a bridge type shit, walking up to them traffic lights next to the. The shopping center. Mm -hmm. And nigga was walking and walking and walking. Then this, this old woman came through her car and just boom, like hit him and killed him. Oh, a old woman? Yeah. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Damn. Took his life right then on sight. God damn, dog. I, man, I'm, I'm sorry about that, for real. Yeah, it was bad, man. It's traumatizing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did, uh, did that happen in front of you, or did you hear about it from the police, or how How did you hear about it? Like, the, the night after type shit, I heard about that shit. Like, because you know niggas in the hood be gossiping, like, when you be in the trap and shit, niggas get to talking. Niggas get to, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, sharing news and shit. So I heard about that shit like that, like the night after type shit.
And then like a year after that shit, bro, like my my niggas got killed in the hood, bro. The shit happened 2023, like around the middle of the year. Goddamn. No. Yeah. So that's like some life changing moments. Like those are like fucking. Those are real some, some real traumatic shit. Some shit that'll really create character. Some shit that'll really change you. You know what I'm saying? Like for better or for worse in certain ways. Mm-hmm. 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 And then was that the most traumatic experience you've gone through, or? No, I don't been the worst shit, but there's certain shit I can't really speak on. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel you. I feel you. That that ain't, that ain't the most traumatic shit I've been through, though. Like, you see, like, and like can since you ask that shit, like, nah, that ain't the most traumatic shit I've been through. Like, I've been through some crazy shit. Like, I've been jumped multiple different times. You know what I'm saying? I've been fucking brawls and shit. I yeah, I've been in fights and shit. I done got beat up hella times. And it's kind of funny because uh, sliced. You feel me? I've been sliced and shit. Like I've been sliced with a knife type shit. Like a nigga try to stab me type shit. Oh Even shit! When I was in prison, like niggas was trying to stab me type shit. Like you know what right. I'm saying? Like two of the two of the first prisons I went to, they was maximum security prisons. You okay. So okay. they only they only be having and I was in the A yard, you feel me? I was in Albion, like you know what I'm saying? In MRC. In MRC and I was in Albion on the A yard. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And even mm-hmm. fucking in in map, like nigga, I was nigga, you know what I'm saying? I was a crazy, crazy yard type shit. Even though the yard's small, you got nigga niggas shit. Niggas was in there trying to press me and shit, you know what I'm saying? Cause Try to figure out like who I fuck with, who I, you know what I'm saying? Like what gang I'm affiliated with and shit, or who I fuck with, or, or who I done probably like done dirt with. Right. I see what you're saying, and uh, you know what's what's funny but then, is that. But in the last prison I went to, bro, it, it was like a medium security, bro, and them niggas had metal access to metal forks, metal bread knives, knives like metal knives. Hmm. Like shanks and shit. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nigga, like the kitchen knives and shit. Oh. Filming nigga had kitchen knives. Like real sharp, okay. big ass knives and shit. Oh, damn. Had, like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Like it was like that. Nigga, it was like, nigga. Bruh. God damn. Nigga, that shit. And then, uh, did you pick in, uh, any habits or behavior changes? Uh, from that experience, like, uh, like, uh, did you, uh, started doing something or anything like that? I definitely picked up some habits from, like, going through that type of shit. And the type of habits I went through, like, my homie gonna, you know what I'm saying, gonna understand this shit, gonna feel this shit, like what I'm about to say. But nigga, in there, bro, when you're in prison... Even when you're out, when you're not in prison and shit, when you're out on the streets and you're going through like traumatic shit like that, life or death situations, fucked up shit, you develop that I don't give a fuck mentality. And that I don't give a fuck mentality, it can help you, but it's also dangerous too. Yeah, yeah. It's real dangerous to have that type of mindset. Yeah, you know what I'm Cause yeah, it'll make you very more true. confident and less sensitive to like being outlandish and shit. Mm-hmm. It'll make you less sensitive to fucking problematic shit going on, and that's yeah. not that's not good because it's like, nigga, you become dangerous type shit. You know the motherfuckers like, bro, you out here, you out there in America, in Arizona. You know the motherfuckers who be armed and dangerous and shit. Niggas like them people who be doing school shootings and shit like that. Yeah. Bro, you be having motherfuckers like that in there, you feel me? Like, I was locked up with killers. I was locked up with real murders. Niggas who done shot motherfuckers. Niggas who done stabbed people. Niggas who done fucking did the worst of the worst. They, they don't even care, do they? They don't give a they fuck. They just take like, advantage. That mentality is not good. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? They can prey on you type shit. And, like, the energy inside there can make you become, like, what you become when you're in there, which is fucking like an animal type shit. That shit ain't Yeah, safe. they don't even... They don't even care See, what... You get angry, too, because a lot of people be missing their families. Like, when I was locked up, nigga, I didn't, couldn't even call my peoples. I was trying to add them to the list, trying to add my moms. Like, bro, it wasn't working, man. Like, nigga, like, I couldn't speak to her. I didn't speak to nobody the whole time when I was in there. And that's fucked. 
Cause yeah, yeah, you you think about people, but when you're in there, you become so comfortable being in there that you stop really thinking about people like that. Yeah, yeah, and you start to wonder like, you actually need that. You uh, start to uh, contemplate just how important that is in your life. Yeah, exactly. There's a different world in there. Like when you're in there, you just like. You be so focused on what's going on in there. Can you turn that shit a little bit down? Let's go, they want some. Huh? They got one sitting. Oh, yeah, all good. All good. All good. It's but all good. It, yeah, man, like when you become in there, you just become a product of your environment. Even out when you're on the outside going through all this crazy shit, you get PTSD, you get, you, be, you have, your mental, you become, bro, you become mentally it's, ill, bro. Like you be having, dealing with mental illnesses. Like a lot of niggas don't get help, a lot of niggas don't go to therapy and shit. So you get in there, like, even on the outside, when you're outside, like, you, nigga don't go get therapy, like, a nigga become a product of their environment. A nigga just get it's worse It's that fire or flight. Exactly, that's that For fire real. or flight shit, you feel me? Yeah, and people don't understand like that, that, that. Be mentally ill. Yeah, and it's, it's that level of trauma where people can't relate to, where it's like, it's not that you can't control it, it's just... It's to a point where it breaks a person. It, it's not just uh, physically, but it's mentally. And that mental state is crucial in, in, in today's world. Because that's, that's what's, what's going to get us through in life. And not only in life, but it's what's going to rebuild us. And once you go, go through that level of trauma, it's like <laughs> undescribable. I would like to say. Exactly. Like, man, you become unpredictable type shit. You know what I'm saying? You become mm -hmm. too dangerous to even be around here, around your people, or even around yourself. Like, you can't even spend time by yourself and shit. Because mm -hmm. when you become, when you get in there and shit, when you're when you out here in the streets going through shit, or when you're in prison, man, you just program. people. You, like, it's like a program type shit. You just become, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just, you uh, you're you going. Become. Yeah, because you're stuck in that fight or flight, you know, it's like a autopilot where it's just like you're just trying to survive at that point. And people who don't understand, they're just going to look at you and say that you're crazy. You feel me? Yeah, exactly. Like people try to say I'm crazy. Like people make up rumors like, oh, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? I went to a mental hospital and shit just because I spent a lot of time by myself and shit doing me working on this YouTube shit, working on my brand, working on my future, on my family's future and shit. Cause mm -hmm, I got kids, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I got a son, and I got a daughter with a different How baby. I'm finna be born like this year, you know what I'm saying? Like, like either this month or next month type shit. How old are they? Uh, you say how old are they? Um, man, my son was born like in June, like early June. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of of twenty twenty three. Okay. And then my daughter like finna be born like this this year type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like two thousand twenty four. So. I was oh, she's on the way. I was, my, I was missing my kids. Yeah, for sure they're on the way. Yeah, but I was I was locked up. I was missing my kids. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing when I'm finna okay. get out. Not knowing if I'm gonna get out. Like I'm going to court dates and they, like, nigga, they adjourning shit. Yeah, like yeah. Pushing shit back, like, to another date and shit. And that shit's, like, the worst feeling when you're in there really trying to get out because you a productive-ass nigga. You a rich-ass nigga. You got shit going on. You got multiple different families. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got, like, nine brothers. Like, what? Like, five step-brothers. Like, two real brothers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know God saying? Like, I got, like, five, six, like, seven fucking step-brothers type shit and, like, two real brothers. You know I'm saying? I got, like, a younger brother. Got an older brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, real shit. Then I got. God damn, you know bro. Saying? My young, my young bro, like maybe like two years younger than me. And then my yeah. older bro, he um, he like, he like maybe like four or five years younger than me type shit. I mean, for older than me, mm. he like four mm -hmm. or five years older than me. Ah uh, damn. Oh, nice nice charging, charging. Yeah, oh, yeah, good. just charging my laptop. But um, 
Yeah, I got a, yeah. Then all my older older bros, like nigga, they spread out around throughout the world and shit, like th like throughout Australia and shit. All my other step brothers and shit. You know what I'm saying? I just stuck, I lost my stepmom and shit, like just like last year type shit. You feel me? Like two years ago. Goddamn. Goddamn. Yeah, for real. Feels like last year, but it was two years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, facts. Like, and I, you know what I'm saying? Like my older bros and shit. They're like, I got like another older bro, like. In their thirties, you know what I'm saying? Like in their late thirties, then I got another older bro in their early, early forties. Well, I got another uh, bro in their late thirties type shit, and in their early thirties and shit. Then I got another one fucking in their late forties type shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got a doctor and got a doctor in, in Sudan. You know what I'm saying? Doctor okay. stuff, bro. Damn. I got another bro like oh, out shit. here, like you know what I'm saying? In fucking in Brisbane. Damn. Yeah. God damn, dog. And I'd have been everywhere hey, in Australia. I'd have been to every state besides Western Australia and Perth and shit. I'd have been all over, like New South Wales. You know what I'm saying? Like Queensland, fucking. You know what I'm saying? Like. Anybody Australia, in the states? South Australia. The states, yeah. I got homies in the states. I got my old, my younger bro. Like went to the states. He been there for like more than four years. Type shit. He then came back God like okay. earlier this year after three years of being there. You know, he's playing ball out there and shit, like high school and shit and college. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. Yeah, for sure. Scholar, you know what I'm saying? I'm some, like, yeah, man. I'm some out here working and shit. Trying to, make, trying to make the league or some type of league. You feel me? Yeah, and I feel My older bro, though. who's like four or five years older than me, she's like, he done been all over the, like, the states, all over, you know what I'm saying, all over the world, different countries, Europe, nigga done been to Asia, you know, Indonesia, all different countries, it's different places, you know, shout out to him too, man, it's my older bro, like, my, my real bro. That's what I'm talking about, man. Hell yeah, man, that's good. It's, it's interesting how far you've came too, because, uh, you mentioned earlier that, uh, that you came from a from a war, and that's the main reason why you uh, moved to where you're at uh, today. Uh, is there is there a way you can go into detail about that? For sure, man. Like you know what I'm saying. Like the wars be real, especially out there. Like nigga, Africa, that bit, that bit, that place, like a third world country. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. the wars be real, like and terrorists be real, just because like. Niggas don't really experience terrorists like that in, in Australia and America and shit like that. Like, nigga, they be out there, you know what I'm saying? It, just because we don't really experience terrorists like that in these Western worlds and shit. In some of these Western worlds, like, nigga, them terrorists be out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, them people who are trying yeah. to, like, take control and shit. Trying to, like, you know what I'm saying? Use you and abuse you and shit. And try to make mm -hmm. you feel, com like, feel uncomfortable for staying out there. That's why we came out here, because we felt uncomfortable. Like, we just wanted to go somewhere better, somewhere more safe, somewhere more, like, who has, somewhere that has better hospitality. Yeah, and I feel we that. we found it. You know, like, Australia, beautiful. Even though it's dangerous, like, it's still beautiful, too. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been wanting to go up there. I know last year, uh, I was supposed to go up there, but because of circumstances, uh, I was unable, even though I had the opportunity. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, like you and me, we had to make a choice. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, I made, the, I made the wrong choice. But it is what it is. We just got to keep on going. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. Just got to keep on going. Yeah, like, even though you're trying to come out here to Australia, like, and yeah, shit going on. Like, man, like, when then you couldn't come type shit, man. Hey, you're going to come through, man. Like, when you come through, like, I'm trying to do an interview with you, too. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been trying to interview people, too. Like, I've asked multiple different people, but people feel like they ain't got a story because people feel like they ain't went through shit. And it's really because of that, like, people be having, like, that broke mentality and shit. Like, these, man, these some broke-ass niggas out here acting like they scared to fucking, like, take a risk type shit. Take a chance, get some money, change your life and shit. <laughs> And they also have some. They also have some fucked up mentalities because they products of their environments. Like they become what they choose to be. And in life, like you be having a choice type shit. So that's why I don't understand why like people be choosing to take the broke route. You know what I'm saying? It's it's harder to be broke than it is to be rich. 
like real talk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's harder to be broke than it is to be rich. Yeah, that's true, very true, man. And I just want to, uh, yeah, for real. I uh, just, uh, just want to tell everyone that that's all the time we have for today. Uh, I just want to thank you, man, uh, Young Sudo, for joining me today at uh, the episode five of Wolves Den, man. Is there anything that you would like to say to the viewers? Yeah, Young Sudo, <laughs> only the blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah nigga, I'm just, I'm steady working. You know what I'm saying? I'm steady fucking. Nigga, I'm steady making these bangers and shit, making these, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm an entertainer, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a content creator, I'm an influencer, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a mogul, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a GOAT, I'm the greatest of all time. You feel Hell me? yeah, like, man. I'm the greatest of all time. Yeah, no like, doubt. Nigga, what I'm doing right now is going to help not only my peoples, but, you know what I'm saying? It's going to help y'all too, you feel me? I'm just... I'm open to like these interviews and sharing my story and you know what I'm saying helping people like understand and see that there's a different way to to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like see my perspective and shit and understand there's a they can take a different path, you feel me? Like you could be that hustler, that trapper, that gangster and still like make it into corporate. Corporate wherever you at, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Whether that's corporate America, corporate Australia, corporate wherever, man. You know what I'm saying? That's I very true. Y'all, I got faith in y'all and shit. I'm very religious, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm Christian. I grew up going to church and shit. Like, all my people, you know what I'm saying? Like, they believe in God and shit. You know what I'm saying? All my people believe in God. All my people say Christians and shit. So. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, yeah like, man. I just want to thank you for. God. We got faith in ourselves and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I believe in all y'all. You know, I believe all y'all got unlimited potential. Hell yeah, man. Thanks, man. I just want to thank you again yeah, for joining me today. Me tapping in all yes, the way sir. Out here in Australia, you dig? Hell yeah. So, uh, man, ladies and gentlemen. Song, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're going to do another one soon. Best believe that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're going to do another one and I'm going to interview you soon. You know what I'm saying? You down for Hell that? Yeah. Yeah, you, d you down to get interviewed? Yeah, I'm down for it, too. Yeah, for real. Uh, oh, anytime, bro. For real. And what's your background, just so these people know as well, too? Let them know. Like, what's your background? Oh, my background, I, I, I can go into that in a, in a different time, for real. It's, uh, if for this episode, I would say that it's all about you, for real. Nah, let them know. Let them know. We're trying to hear that. I'm trying to hear that, bro. Let them know. Yeah, man. It's your boy, Ellison. You know, I'm just a neighbor, your friend in the neighborhood. Uh, I used to be a pothead. Uh, when I've been through some shit, you feel me? It used to be uh, HVAC tech, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, things come and go. So here I am, just trying to uh, make things make uh, things work as far as uh, following my dreams, which is making music and doing this podcast, interviewing different people and sharing their their stories and then trials and tri tribulations. You feel me? You already know, man. Nah, shout out to you, man. I'm like, hey, man, proud of you, bro. And Thanks, like, man. hey, man, I, I still it. got my mom and dad out here and shit. You know what I'm saying? I still got my Hell mom yeah. and dad. Like, my mom young, my pops old, but my my mom, my pops only like, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe like, like 20 years older than my mom's type of shit. So, nigga, like less than 20 years type shit, less than 20 years older than my mom's. So, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, they still good. They still got a lot of life to live. I still got a lot of life to live. You only live once, so just chase your dreams. Follow your passion. Don't be scared to, like, stop working your normal 9 to 5 or your normal job. Just to potentially be broke and hustle and, like, go through the struggle and just make something bigger. Because I didn't went through the struggle. I didn't. When I was traveling all over Australia and shit, I was going from Airbnb to Airbnb, hotel to hotel, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes sleeping in the car. And man, I was mm -hmm. just really figuring it out. Like, sometimes in life, you got to figure it out. A lot of people be scared to just figure it out because they, they worried about what other people going to think of them, what themselves are going to think of them. Like, they worried that people be scared to fail. People always want that safety net, you know what I'm saying? They always want to, like, feel comfortable and shit. But sometimes in life... Like, to be in a different position, to get rich, and to change your life, like, you gotta, 
be in them uncomfortable positions. You know what I'm saying? You gotta like, you gotta plan, you gotta execute, you gotta try. Like a lot of people be scared to try. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you only live once and shit. So why not do this shit right now? Yeah, but for real, man. I, I ain't gonna lie. That's that's the truth. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just gonna end this uh, episode by saying that hey, if you haven't followed already, creator. yes, sir, be a content creator or follow your dreams, yeah, whether that being an artist, follow your dreams. Yeah, like yeah. It, it could be being a barber, it can be a content creator, whatever it is. Uh, I recommend uh, uh, just doing what you feel like artist. is best for you. Yeah, for real. Because yeah, yeah, exactly. at the end of like, the day, I recommend doing what's best for you for two, too. Yeah, man. I, re- I recommend y'all to do what's best for y'all. Follow your dreams. Exactly. Exactly. At the end of the day, uh, this system that was built for us is uh, just going to take advantage of us. And why wouldn't you take advantage by have, uh, having to do what you love and make money off it? You feel me? Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather mm-hmm. get get rich or die trying than to stay broke and be struggling exactly exactly so like uh, i told y'all earlier in this interview it's harder to be broke than it is to get rich so as long as you know that and understand that you'd want to get rich and stay rich you know what i'm saying because not only just getting rich is like a for real and that's the truth Hold on, uh, we just lost connection real quick. Yeah, facts. No, Give it a bro, sec. We good. Yeah. All right, bro. Uh, I'm gonna have to end this uh, this interview real quick. Uh, thank you for joining everyone for uh, uh, episode five of Wolves Den. This was Young Sudo. I hope you tune in next time. Thank you. Boom. Young Sudo only the Blood. Yes, sir. <laughs> shout out Wolves there. Shout out, shout out Ellison Rod- Rodate. Hell yeah. Thanks, man. Thank y'all for watching.